Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Word in the Berg, our monthly topical talk show about all things Harrisburg and the region. Today, we have a very serious topic. It's about how we eliminate pedestrian fatalities and traffic-related fatalities in the city of Harrisburg. Um, we have a strategy for this, and it's called Vision Zero. It's a strategy that's been very successful in Europe. It's uh, moved to America, and it's being adopted in a lot of cities, and we're looking to adopt this strategy right here, right now, in Harrisburg. Did you know that each year over 40,000 people are killed in traffic-related fatalities on streets like our own here in Harrisburg? That's almost the population of our city. It's a significant problem, uh, but we believe it's a solvable problem. It's a problem that uh, can, be, can be solved in its entirety, and that the goal should be to eliminate to zero um, this, uh, these fatalities that occur. We think it's doable, and we've got three guests who are going to talk about it with us today. Uh, first, we have a community activist, Ms. Lisa Jenkins. Uh, she uh, has been inspired on this issue in particular because of her own personal events and uh, came to visit me and talk to me about uh, ways that we can improve uh, safety issues in Harrisburg. We also have our city engineer, Wayne Martin, who um, in planning all of our streets and road projects in the city knows that safety is really at the core of our mission. And we have a consultant with the company Illuminate, Mr. David Levy, who is working with the city to develop our action plan for Vision Zero. Welcome, all of you. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. So, Ms. Jenkins, I know your story and your motivation here is very, very personal, and uh, let's, let's start with that. Can you, can you tell me why you feel this issue is so important and why we have to work together to eliminate pedestrian-related deaths? Yes, sir. I think it's important that, first of all, I've been seeing it a lot, and then it came to my own doorsteps in August when my son was um, trying to cross the street to go to his car. Uh, his wife was going to have a baby the next day and they were going to prepare to go to the hospital when he was struck by a car just standing beside a vehicle and he was struck and hit and knocked into the center lane of the street and it was a hit and run and thank God that another neighbor had came and stood beside his body that no one um, another car would come and run him over but in that he um, had uh, very bad injuries. He had a dislocated shoulder and his arm was broken in three locations, which now he has screws and pins and plates in his arm. And then um, I just looked at it and um, you be someone that say something has to be done, something has to be done. But then with, when another neighbor of mine, Cynthia Wilson had got killed this year, um, it kind of struck me and I was one to say enough is enough and then that's when I start I came to the mayor's office and I made an appointment and you all were so nice and grateful to just receive me and take me in and to hear my story. Yeah and of course we're talking about State Street especially yes. the area uh, across the State Street Bridge which has proven to be uh, one of the least safe areas uh, in the country, let alone uh, in the city of Harrisburg. One of the things which impressed me so much about you was that when you came to our office, you, you came with a list of um, action items that you thought uh, could be implemented. And, and a large part of this process is gathering community feedback so that we can develop our action plan. Do you want to share a few of the things, the changes that you think we should see? Yes, I um, shared with you like the signage on the streets, um, crosswalks and lighting, um, maybe, um, you know, taking the street and making less lanes and everything and also monitoring the traffic, like the speed and what's coming through there, how the traffic is rolling through there, you know, so fast that, you know, uh, more crosswalks because the pedestrians um, where we're at is only like um, from where I live like you got to walk like a block or a block and a half to just get to a crosswalk but making it known that the pedestrians you know are here and this is a residential neighborhood and pedestrians are here and that they are crossing this street okay thank you 
So Wayne, I'll turn to you. As our, as our engineer, this has been an issue, um, but why does the city of Harrisburg need a, a Vision Zero plan? And um, uh, why is it so important? So uh, this uh, Ms. Jenkins story, unfortunately, is not the only one. And uh, other cities have adopted Vision Zero with, with a lot of success. It, like you mentioned, it did come from Europe. Uh, New York City, I believe, was the first city in the United States to adopt it. And within the first two years, uh, they've seen 40% uh, reduction in, in casualties and serious injuries in, in those areas where uh, improvements were made. Um, you know, these, these uh, traffic fatalities and these traffic-related serious injuries um, cannot be solved by just the engineering staff. Uh, what a Vision Zero policy would do is bring all departments together, so uh, police on enforcement, uh, the community and outreach component obviously, uh, helping educate drivers and pedestrians and, and school children and crossing guards and, and everyone involved, and, and then obviously the in engineering component too. So it's a, it's a collaborative approach to traffic safety as opposed to a siloed approach, and I think that's why it's uh, been so successful in other cities. And I know it's data driven, um, and from your, your understanding of the data and your understanding of Harrisburg, uh, I know we, we are focused a lot on State Street. Are there other areas of the city that, um, uh, obviously this is encompassing the city wide, but that particularly are of concern to you and that we should be looking at? Uh, definitely, Mayor. Um, one intersection in particular comes to mind as probably one of our more dangerous intersections is Cameron and Market Street. And so we're going to be uh, focused on that. But like you said, it's data driven. And we will be generating uh, heat maps uh, using crash data. And, um, and that will be available on, on the website and uh, so the community can see. Um, because the one thing we don't want to do is uh, do something that's not making sense. We don't have an unlimited budget, as you know. Uh, so we want to we uh, make those improvements where they're going to have the most impact on, on traffic safety. OK, absolutely. And David, tell me about Illuminate. Uh, what do you do? What's your role as uh, consultants in this uh, process for the city of Harrisburg? Well, <coughs> excuse me, Illuminate is a community engagement firm, and uh, we are on a team with Wallace Montgomery engineers on this project. Um, and our role, you know, is simply that it's community engagement. And we believe, uh, we focus on problem solving in organizations and municipalities. And um, what we do, what we believe in is just starting at the, at the ground and going from the ground up. And what that means and what the, our, the name of our firm means is that we try to illuminate a problem um, by first developing empathy with the people who are experiencing the problem. So people who live in the neighborhood, who know what the problem is, we want to talk to those people first so we understand from the people who are experiencing the problem what it is, what ideas you have about solving the problem, um, and, and keep you involved all the way through the solution phase. Mm -hmm. And uh, how do you envision the process unfolding over the next months? What would people look for? How can they get involved? We're going to be doing a lot of different things. Our goal is to engage as many people as possible in the community. Uh, we are planning a sort of pop-up uh, survey on the street, on State Street, uh, in a couple of weeks um, that we'll be, we, we can, we'll be hearing more about. Um, we're going to be engaging people in the street. We're going to be engaging people online through social media and email. We're going to be going to community meetings and we're going to be holding workshops that the public can actually roll up their sleeves and participate in as well. That's great. And Lisa, I'll turn to you. Um, uh, do you have thoughts on how we can actively engage the public, uh, especially your neighbors? And I know you've already done a lot of that on your own, but now we have, um, we have a lot of partners that want to, to participate in this. Yes, just come out, you know, um, have like a little community, something to get them involved. And plus I can still like do footwork, like going door to door and letting them know that the event's coming up, get a date, you know, and come out and just do something in the community that they'll know that you're there. That's the most important thing, knowing that something's going on and that someone's eyes are open and that you're there. And that's how we can get things rolling. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and Wayne, I, I believe, uh, you know, I think this problem is solvable. I think uh, maybe uh, people uh, have grown accustomed to it. They, they accept it and they think that um, this is the way it always have, has to be. A lot of uh, Harrisburg's history is one of 
um, at least uh, the, the last 50 years has been about creating a, a city that's based around commuters rather than a city that's based around pedestrians. And, uh, and uh, we're, we're trying to change some of that. We tried to change some of that on, on Front Street with the, the bike lane and the reducing of the number of travel lanes. We're, we're looking to bring Second Street two-way. I know we're looking to put in a sheltered bike lane on 7th Street and all, all sorts of different things. But can you talk philosophically about um, why you think we can achieve this? So uh, part of traffic safety is, is uh, a big major part of traffic safety is speed management. Um, speed, speed doesn't necessarily uh, cause an accident, but it certainly can make an accident more catastrophic. Uh, in an urban environment like the city of Harrisburg, uh, you have different speeds, right? You have vehicle speeds, pedestrian speeds, bicyclists. Uh, we launched the bike share program, so there's uh, conceivably more bikes on, on our streets um, currently. So um, managing those speed differentials is going to be critical moving, you know, moving forward. And um, we're not going to eliminate all accidents. We want to eliminate the injuries, the major injuries and the deaths. And it you know, there are countries in Europe that have essentially done just that. It's a long-term approach. You know, it's not going to happen in, in next year or the following year. Uh, I think the policy, if adopted in the fall uh, of this year, once once it you know we go through the planning process and and each department in the city identifies what their tasks are going to be, um, uh, you know, it's a it's a long-term uh, goal of of eliminating those those casualties and. And, and serious injuries related to traffic accidents. But uh, the good news is it's, it's going to be obvious and we're going to be held accountable by, by the citizens because we're going to have our goals and our successes every year um, published, uh, reported to you, reported to the citizens who are paying our salaries and they're going to uh, be able to monitor our successes. And, and the other thing uh, about this program is we're not looking to spend tons of money right away. Uh, it's more tactical approach, so it could be signage and line painting and, and signal timing and some lighting improvements and things that, you know, if it's not going to work, we can take it out and try something else. Maybe try something that might be more successful in, in the neighborhood or, or on this uh, corridor. So uh, it's just gonna, it may be a trial and error. Yeah. And, and I know one of the issues which, uh, which keeps coming up in addition to State Street has to do with um, what to do about uh, the crosswalks on Front Street and um, whether it is an issue of signage or location or even had, um, even had uh, somebody call my office to say, uh, really, we need to change the state law. Um, which, uh, you know, is, uh, is dangerous in and of itself. Um, so uh, do you have thoughts on, on potential strategies, future ways that we can make Front Street safer? Uh, you know, statistically, Front Street uh, with the bike lane it is safer for pedestrians. Um, I know that's not what you may see on online because we did have a, mm -hmm. uh, a, a hit um, recently, uh, which was videotaped and, and available to be seen online. Um, it's, Front Street is a difficult road. You do have that dual threat. You have a lot of people cross in to visit the park. I think improved signage um, could help. Uh, again, it's spe you know speed management um, enforcement certainly I think has helped. Uh, we've deployed some message boards, but maybe some more permanent message boards, some feedback uh, signage that lets people know that they are exceeding the speed limit. And uh, but I think we have to be creative in in those ways too. Um, we have to have messages that stick with people, um, so it, it's going to be a it's going to be a approach that again involves all three components of traffic safety enforcement education and then then the engineering part. Absolutely. So David, can we talk a little bit uh, about the the data that's being collected too, mm -hmm. and uh, what it is that we're we're looking to um, to compile and to learn from? Mm -hmm. Well, we're really, um, from our perspective, we're creating, we're collecting two different types of data. We're collecting a lot of what you would call traffic data, which is what Wayne is talking about to, mm -hmm. some, to some extent, vehicle speeds, um, turning movements, um, things that people are doing in cars. Um, we're also collecting what we call human data, which is what we're getting by working with the residents and interviewing the people who are experiencing the problem. We really want to understand the human 
behavioral side of what's happening for the, from the pedestrians, the cyclists, the transit users, and the drivers. Um, and really, as Wayne, as Wayne is saying, we're going to use that data to try and make a collective sort of cultural shift about how we move through public space and how we share public space among different transportation modes. And, and for a long time in our country, we've been very focused on moving in vehicles to um, really the detriment of all other modes. And I think nationally, we're really coming around to a new understanding that people are people, however we're moving about. So we really want to collect data that understands what people are doing, why they're doing it, what their needs are to help solve the problem. Yeah, I think that's so important. I think that's really the, the key to Harrisburg's um, growth and future economic development has to do with whether or not we can make our city uh, a walkable city, uh, appeal to people that, um, that really don't like the suburban style of having to drive everywhere and, and, and want to be able to live in a community in a neighborhood where you can um, get along potentially without a car. Right. And uh, that we've seen a tremendous influx in people wanting to move back to the cities for those reasons. So this problem is um, is is only building, but you I think you've got momentum from a lot of different individuals that would like to see a change now that maybe didn't exist um, years ago. Do you do you see that in, in your community? Definitely, outreach? I definitely see that. I think there's definitely this is a moment in time that we can take advantage of because there is a shift that's happening. And we've had a lot of success in Washington, D.C., and even in the surrounding suburban areas of doing these types of projects uh, that really had immediate positive impacts on people's quality of life. Can you give me an example of um, a change that happened maybe in D.C. that uh, is yeah. something we can learn from here? Well, you know, one particular street, we had a street very much like State Street, fast-moving traffic. We had a university on one side and sort of a shopping area on the other side. And it was literally impossible to cross the street um, and in the middle of the city. Um, through a process, we actually did employ some of the what's called tactical urbanism, which is the things that Wayne has touched on, which is some of the temporary experimental improvements. Um, and it, it, it completely changed the lives of the people who live there. It cost next to nothing in that case. It was a small project. But people now can cross the street, and everyone benefited. The university benefited. The people who own the shops benefited because people could reach them to spend money. Uh, and it really helped to knit the neighborhood together, which I think is something that State Street area really needs. Yeah. And Lisa, can you talk a little bit uh, about uh, why, from your perspective, State Street is so dangerous? Uh, I know that uh, maybe people that live in other parts of the city, they, they don't quite under, understand it because they don't have to, to live it day in and day out. I think why is the traffic? You know, we have five lanes to cross, and then there's not a lot of crosswalks, and it's the traffic, and then if you're not we're in a residential neighborhood. So if you're coming in to go to work and then you're going above the speed limit, which I said before is like being on the highway sometimes. When I'm sitting in my car, I can a car can come by me and my whole car will just shake. Mm -hmm. um, it's just dangerous. You know, you're, you're getting fearful of crossing and then you don't wanna walk two, three, like a block and a block and a half just to go to a crosswalk. So what they do is they'll stand in that middle lane, which is a turning lane, which would be a safety for us. And then you're just, it's the traffic. I think it's the speed. It's the speed that, that has to slow down to yeah. the speed. And even with the schools being near, you're seeing that they're not even reverencing like the um, 15 miles per hour. They're just going through there like it's nothing, like they're on a, a highway and yeah. it's way over 35 miles per hour, which the signs are saying. Yeah, State Street must be our widest street. Is that true, Wayne? Our widest street in the city? It, 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 uh, it, it probably I, is. I believe and, it is. And uh, one of the things that you mentioned to me, uh, which I hadn't thought of, uh, is that um, with, tra uh, with parking the way it is, sometimes it's hard to park um, in front of your, your house, and you've got to park on the other side of the street. And that's something that I think uh, people in other neighborhoods with narrow streets or with, they're just not aware that just the basic aspect of having to get to your car could cause you to have to cross um, five lanes of traffic. Yes. Uh, yeah. So um, I, I think uh, some of the things that you've suggested in addition to the crosswalks that we're looking at, uh, one of them is better lighting. Do you yes. find um, w one of the projects that the city 
is proud of and that undertook was that we did uh, do a major conversion of all of our existing lighting, turned it into LED lighting, which is brighter. But there are definitely areas of the city that, are, um, that just don't have enough fixtures. Um, would you like to see more lighting on State Street? And Yes. And, and, and uh, what were some of the other changes that you think? Um, more lighting um, on State Street. Um, and I also think um, if we could have, even if it's for a little while, um, to slow the traffic down, if they see like a police presence too, I think that that would help too until we get everything started and everything, you know, gets in into, into play. You know, that if they see someone around, like you have to really slow down. And like we said, the crosswalks and the signatures, the signage and all that kind of stuff, it would really, really help. Yeah. Well, uh, an aspect of this is enforcement. And mm -hmm. uh, I know we've had some conversations with the police department about this recently. Um, when the city was experiencing financial troubles years ago, they, they combined the traffic uh, unit with the, the regular patrol unit. Okay. So it does exist, but the officers spend the majority of their time not on traffic-related issues, but on calls, response to emergency calls throughout the, the whole city. I think it's our vision for the police department uh, as we uh, can increase the complement to return that to a standalone department. I think that's something that we, we can achieve over time. But in the, in the short term, I think the key is uh, making sure that uh, we, we guide them with the data to where they can be most effective in their enforcement efforts. So we know we have uh, issues uh, on State Street, but is it, is it particularly bad at a certain time of day? Uh, is it, uh, you know, or, or a certain time of year even. And I think as we collect the data over time, we're going to be able to deploy the resources that we have um, even more wisely. Yes. And, that, and, and that will, you'll see an impact. And we have seen a number of enforcement uh, uh, issues, you know, improvements on State Street from the signage to some um, operations that have occurred. Mm -hmm. So Wayne, back to you. Um, what would you like the public to know uh, that we haven't uh, discussed yet today? Um, that we're, you know, just basically that we're listening. Um, you know, since I've been here for four years, we've had a lot of requests for uh, speed bumps or signage. Um, you know, w we've had to reject a lot of these requests, um, but the, the public maybe didn't understand why. And I think the, the good thing about a Vision Zero policy, it's going to tell them, uh, we're going to lay out a procedure and then we're going to um, of maybe requesting, maybe a neighborhood would request a, a, a safety zone or something of that nature. And then we will prioritize those requests with, with the data and, and try and um, deploy some of, the, some of these things we're talking about. I mean, you know, I hate when we have to deny certain requests because I understand why they're being made. And if I had more time uh, to spend with each of the you know, people who signed that petition, I could understand and or I can explain to them so they could better understand why we had to reject maybe a request for a stop sign at a particular intersection or, or something like that. Because there are engineering standards that we still have to follow. Um, so just, you know, that we're listening and please, you know, don't, don't be shy about participating in this. Uh, we're going to use this, this human data that we collect, these requests that we collect, these petitions and, and surveys, we're going to use the data, so please, uh, please participate. Yeah, and I think also that um, each major project, infrastructure project, the city undertakes moving forward to uh, these issues are front and center in ways that they haven't been in the past. So people may know that Third Street is in the process of being repaved right now, but they may not know, because they haven't seen it quite yet, that at the heart of that was a desire to make uh, crossing Third Street for pedestrians safer and easier, um, allow um, you know buses to uh, load and unload in, in better locations. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got uh, bump outs and green infrastructure and all sorts of things that are that, that have an effect on traffic and safety, right? Okay. And can you talk just briefly about some of the upcoming projects that are scheduled uh, for the city? Uh, certainly. Well, th Third Street will continue. Uh, we have, you know, a few more months, well, potentially a year left on that project. Uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of work to be done, particularly that one incorporates a lot of green infrastructure with partnership with CRW. 
uh, North 7th Street uh, between um, Riley and Forrester uh, is uh, in conjunction with the federal courthouse and the state archives construction. There's some improvements going on uh, on there that, that are in design phase right now. Um, and obviously uh, FIA is a major partner in that project, had funded some of the early studies that were done. Uh, the Second Street Two-Way, uh, the on it's an ongoing uh, traffic study being done um, because the work, you know, we know Second Street will be safer when it's converted to two-way. What we don't want to see is uh, State Street become more more dangerous because maybe commuters are taking a State Street instead of uh, going, go, you know, going on the highway. So. Um, th those are three that, that come to mind. Uh, Berry Hill, Derry Street intersection has always been one that we're focused on, and, and PennDOT's uh, finishing up on a traffic study uh, in that area. State Street, um, obviously, there's uh, various sources of funds um, available for, for that project, even though uh, some of them have just, you know, become available because mm -hmm. of the, the accidents that we've had recently. Um, but, you know, also we want to look uh, anytime, like you said, when, Mayor, when we're doing a paving project, um, if we can make a simple change that could improve safety. Berry Hill and Cameron intersection come to mind. Um, there's no reason why we can't um, implement a right in, right out uh, on Berry Hill and Cameron. We've had public outreach meetings where uh, it seemed to be a consensus that it made sense uh, so that Berry Hill is not used as a cut through for commuters that they use Cameron to Paxton to 83 instead of cutting through a neighborhood where, uh, you know, we have school children walk in between the Boys and Girls Club and the schools. Uh, maybe, maybe they don't belong. So uh, those are the projects that are sort of in the pipeline in design. Uh, but we're hoping that some of this data uh, focuses our attention for next year and the, and the next 10 years, really, on areas where we can make these low-cost safety improvements. Absolutely. And the, so the political will and the consensus is there to do this. Uh, we do have resources. It's a question of how we deploy them. And uh, I think, I think we're, we can get there. We've already seen improvements, and we're going to continue to make them. Uh, David, so how do people get involved? They're watching this. How do they reach out to you? Um, what, uh, how, do they, how do they give you feedback so that it can be incorporated into our action plan? Well, the good news is we're just getting started, mm -hmm. and so nobody's missed anything yet. We're right at the beginning. Uh, we've set up a web page, um, and the web page is vision0hbg.org. Um, right now, the web page is set up so that it has a form where people can put in their email addresses and join our stakeholder list. Um, so I'd encourage people to do that. We're going to be reaching out as well using social media, um, and we're going to be on the street more in the neighborhood um, where. Uh, the residents are. And so I encourage people, please come talk to us, tell us what you're thinking um, and what you think needs to happen here. Great. So check out the website and uh, Lisa, I'll give you the final word. I'm just going to um, try to uh, work with the neighbors and encourage everyone to come out and work with you all that we can get the ideas and because I know it's probably not only me, but that they can see that you all are doing something mm -hmm. and I really appreciate it. Just come out, talk, get involved, because this is your neighborhood. And that's what I would have to say. And I just want to say thank you, because when I did come, you were just right on it. Your office was right on it. It wasn't no pullback or pushing me to a side. And everyone just jumped into the project and made it what it is today. And what it's going to be is better. So I just want to say thanks. Well, thank you. This is important to all of us, and it's at the heart of what we want the future of our city to be, which yes. is uh, safe for everyone and a place where people uh, enjoy living and can prosper. So thank you for watching. We're in the Berg. Uh, we'll see you next month. This is Mayor Eric Papenfus. I hope you found our discussion about Vision Zero interesting, and I hope you will uh, participate and reach out to the city and be part of the upcoming conversations and discussions that will be happening throughout the community. Thank you.